How we doing, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Wisconsin Sports on the Go with Trage. I'm your host, Trage, coming back at you on this t- uh, Wednesday here with some Brewer talk here. And the Packers had their final cuts yesterday, had them in yesterday afternoon. We're going to cover them. We're going to cover the Brewers and their loss to the Cubs on Tuesday night. We're going to cover them both here. We're going to cover the upcoming game for the Brewers here coming up today for Milwaukee. So with that, we're going to jump right into the Brewers. A loss last night, one nothing loss to the Cubs. Looking at the box there for the Brewers in this one. Seven hits scattered throughout that game for the Brewers. Eight hits for the Cubs. One run was the difference here in that bottom of the first inning for the Cubbies on an RBI ground out. Hit by pitch early on in that one. And then a double by half. Ballinger brought him in. Excuse me. Ballinger brought him in for the Cubbies. Looking at the Brewers box in this one. Yelich one for three on the night there. One walk, one strikeout. Contreras one for four. Cano in two for four for this Brewers team. Monasterio one for three. And Caratini and Terang both came up with hits for this Brewers team. The Brewers left some guys on base. Uh, William Adamas, Monasterio were right in the middle of that early on in the game there. The Brewers put some pressure on them at first and second there a couple times, put runners into scoring position, and they could not capitalize. Monasterio and Adamas had some struggle there for the Brewers down the stretch. Um, Looking into the stat line pitching-wise for the Brewers, seven innings out of Corbin Burns, eight hits. One earned run, seven strikeouts, two walks. Burns looked good. Burns didn't have his stuff early on in the game, but he battled. He dueled it out with Justin Steele. And I thought Burns was impressive with his uh, ability to duel without even having his best stuff out there. Abner Uribe came in in relief, one inning, one strikeout. Got him to that ninth inning where the Brewers failed to convert. Rowdy Telez came in to pinch hit, had a line out to end it there. It was good to see Rowdy come in, I, and this is in a loss. But Rowdy came in in that pinch hitting role, and he delivered with that little shot into left field. And I know caught for that out, but it's good to see Rowdy is still putting solid contact into that baseball. Looking at the lineup for this one, I'm I'm stumped. I really am stumped with this one. I understand where they were thinking here. They had Canna at first base, and I understand the Canna playing first base. Canna has been hitting great for the Brewers as of late. Um, but looking down my lineup here, you look at that four spot with Willie Adamas in there, and I know Willie has been hitting a little bit better as of late for the Brewers, but I don't see Willie Adamas as a four hitter for this Brewers team. I would have rather seen a guy, I mean, and, and it's like Canna move down to that four spot even for this Brewers team. I just think that in your run scoring positions, I think the Brewers are still lacking in that run scoring position. And we're going to cover that a little bit here. Some releases by teams today. We're going to cover our yesterday. We're going to cover that and see if some of those guys might be able to come into this Brewers lineup and help out. Or if it's going to be a minor league guy that's going to come up. But we're going to cover that. But with the Brewers, they struggled. Uh, Burns struggled with his location in this game. Had a couple pitches where he missed. I mean, the Cubs in this game weren't overly um, great hitting wise either. Jan Gomes, two for three on the night. Swanson, two for four. Ian Happ went two for four. And Tuchman went one for three along with Morale. So you held down the Cubs decently well. Bellinger, 0 for four night. You didn't pitch bad. There wasn't a a bad pitch in this game. But the offense just couldn't produce. And the offense ran into a standstill again with runners in scoring position. And that's where I'm looking at the Brewers here. Um, Stats on the season with runners in scoring position right now. And I am looking at, uh, right here, the Brewers are hitting 236 with runners in scoring position on the season right now. They are just above the Mets. Actually, the Mets are hitting 236 along with them. Along with the Pirates are hitting 235. The Tigers and the Yankees, both below them and then the A's. You are six to the bottom in run, uh, hitting with runners in scoring position. And that has been a struggle for this Brewers team all season long. But looking down here, and then you look at how the Brewers are still producing runs. Well, in this nine-game stretch, that offense has been ticked up a little bit, and they've been scoring a little bit more. They've been hitting 
in these innings they're having massive innings and we haven't seen that as of in this game here for the Brewers they were struggling a little bit and that's where I'm looking is that we went through that nine game win streak and everything was right with the world the pitching was as it's been but the offense was kicking it up and I said to myself okay what's the back side of this look like will this Brewers team bounce back they're, they're going to lose a game I didn't expect them to finish the season out on a complete win streak they were going to lose a game but is this going to be the one loss and then we can get off of it again? And then tomorrow or tonight or today here this afternoon, can the Brewers bounce back and take care of that last game of the series and win the series? Or will the offensive struggles from last night carry over into today's game? I'm not sure. That's, that's what I'm waiting to see here out of this Brewers team is that the offense was good. Everything was right with the world. Everything was rolling. But could that offense maintain? And they didn't do a bad job hitting the ball last night. They put the ball in play. They had some solid hits. I mean, the wind didn't help there at Wrigley. The wind blew a lot of those balls back. You look at the one Tyrone Taylor hit to left there, caught at the wall by Hap. And then you look at the one William Contreras hit right uh, right center there. I mean, normal games, Miller Park or American Family Field, sorry. That game, or that ball is out, and the Brewers there have a lead. But that's where I'm looking here is, Is this offense going to pick it up game uh, three of this series? And can they produce runs without the home run ball? Because even looking back to game one, the big start came from a can of two-run home run and a solo home run by Yelich. Well, can this offense produce by just hitting, I mean, just getting the solid contact base hit to left, base hit to right, wherever you can poke the ball, base hits all the way around. Can the Brewers offense produce in that sense? And that's where I'm looking just, Hitting-wise for this Brewers team, and even in hits, third to the bottom in hits this season for the Brewers. I mean, that is a struggle. It's been a struggle for the Brewers all season long. The pitching is what really holds them above water because even in runs scored, RBIs in total as of right now, 556 for this Brewers team. Those are not impressive stats, especially for a team that's winning a division right now. And that's where I'm looking at right now for this Brewers team is, can this offense pull its weight here for the rest of the season and uh, going into the playoffs if they make it that far. But with that, I'm going to jump back into the Brewers Cubs series. Today, 1.20 p.m., we're going to have Woodruff against Hendricks there to finish out this series. Woodruff coming into this one, 3-1 and one on the season, a 2.65 ERA. Hendricks coming into it, 5-7 and seven with a uh, 3.80 ERA. The Brewers have had their struggles with Hendricks uh, over the years. Looking down the Brewers batting order, nobody with a really solid average against him. Caratini, 333, and then Terang hitting 500. But other than that, 250 and below for the rest of this Brewers team. Yelich hitting 234 against Kyle Hendricks. Looking at the Cubs lineup against Woodruff, Bellinger's hitting 286, Swanson's 455. Suzuki sitting at an 833 uh, average against Brandon Woodruff. But that's about it for solid hitting out of the Cubs. So they both seen each other. They both know what they got. It's just going to be it's going to be another battle on the mound there, I do believe, with Hendricks and Woodruff. Hendricks has been a little bit shaky this year, but I do think that Hendricks is still bringing the right stuff to the table. And he's always had the Brewers number. So I think this is going to be a big matchup. There, pitching wise, just like uh, last night was between Steele and Burns, I think there's going to be another big pitching matchup against uh, Woodruff and Hendricks, and hopefully the Brewers can get off the Schneid here. They lost lost the winning streak, lost this last night's game there, but I think they can get back to it here today against the Cubs. But with that, I'm looking at: Do the Brewers have enough clutch bats in this lineup? And by clutch, I mean when the all the chips are down and the pressure is on, does this Brewers team have the ability that we are in the bottom of the ninth and we just put a runner on second base? Say Contreras gets on because Contreras has been a consistent bat for this Brewers team. So say Contreras gets on for this Brewers team. Do we have enough consistent bats behind Contreras to bring him in? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think we have enough consistency that I can say you know. We looked over the years of this Brewers team, and it was like Yelich came up in 2018, 2019. It was like, they don't want to mess with that. This is going to be our, this is our game now. I mean, you had a runner on second. You had nobody out. Yelich was going to bring him in. That's just how it was. You look way back, and you had Ryan Braun. 
Braun came up and it was like, okay, this is it. Bronny in those MVP years, you couldn't get him out. You didn't want to pitch the Braun, but in some cases you had to pitch the Braun. And that's where I'm looking right now. Do the Brewers have that guy? And I think they do. I think they really do in William Contreras, but can guys get on in front of William Contreras that he can bring them in? Christian Yelich, he's hit or miss for me right now. I think Yelich has, he, he's been a consistent bat for the Brewers here in this season. I think Yelich could be put into an RBI role, but putting him at that leadoff spot, he's more of the guy who's going to get on for you because I'm looking at the bottom of this lineup for the Brewers right now. Terang, they've been mixing Tyrone Taylor in there a lot, and then you look at guys like, um, Weimer being put down in that nine spot or guys like Brian Anderson. I don't think those guys are consistent enough to get on for Yelich. So then who's going to get on? Who's going to set the table for the big guys to get on or for the big guys to hit? And right now your two big guys are batting one and two in your order in Yelich and in Contreras. And then behind them, I think Mark Dan has developed into a pretty consistent bat for this Brewers team as of late. Carlos Santana's coming around a little bit for this Brewers team, and you hope maybe Rowdy Telez has finally figured it out just a little bit that Rowdy can contribute a lot to this Brewers team. But I really do think that the Brewers are missing some clutch bats, and that's what I'm going to cover with my next one. A lot of players have been recently waived here in the MLB. Um, Looking down the list of guys who have cleared or will be put, or they're waived as of yesterday. And we'll be on waivers here, and the Brewers will have until September 1st to claim, if they want to, some of these guys. I'm looking down this list here, and you have guys like Randall Gritchick, recently acquired by the Angels. They released him on waivers. He's out there. Um, Hunter Renfro has just been put out there. And Harrison Bader has also been added out there. So with that, I know a lot of people will say, okay, well, we can look down into the minor leagues and we can find guys. We can we, we can go down into the minors, and we can say, okay, hey, Owen Miller, you're hitting 264 down at AAA right now. We could definitely use your bat back up in this Major League roster, and I do think Owen Miller does deserve another chance at the Major League roster. Okay, but looking at that, who do you send down there? Okay, you got Joey Weimer. Weimer's a viable candidate to be sent down for this Brewers team. Does Owen Miller fill that hole in the outfield like you want him to? I don't know. If I'm going for, I want my outfield to be locked down, but also able to hit. I don't want to make all these moves all game long. I want to have a guy out there consistent. Well, okay, Owen Miller could be a guy to be brought up. He can play infield. He's a good infielder. I Maybe a third baseman. Maybe he could be a backup third baseman. Maybe it's time Brian Anderson gets designated down and potentially down to AAA. Brian Anderson is getting a lot of playing time right now. Maybe it's time we add a guy like Owen Miller back up. Brian Anderson goes back down. Also looking at guys like, well, you could say Jesse Winker. I don't think Jesse Winker, I don't think we give him another shot at the Major League roster. I think he needs to stay in AAA for the rest of this one. But then you look at guys like, okay, Abraham Toro, 292 down there in AAA. He's got a 444 average in the majors. Abraham Toro, viable candidate to play third, first base for you up in the majors, even be a guy to sit at the DH spot. So Abraham Toro, potential guy. But then we look, okay, we want a guy who we know can hit major league pitching right now. We bring him in, he can hit major league pitching right now. And I think that is a guy like Randall Gritchick. And I talked about him during the trade deadline, and I said the Brewers need to be looking at the Rockies right now, and they need to be calling about Randall Gritchick, and they need to be calling about C.J. Crone, both of which didn't happen. We didn't get C.J. Crone. We didn't get Randall Gritchick. Now, second shot. This is a second shot at Randall Gritchick here. Looking at his stats here for the season, 2023 stats. In Colorado, he was hitting 308. He had, let's just see here, he had eight home runs. 27 RBIs, 119 total bases, 19 doubles, 74 hits in 240 at bats. 308 average for Randall Gritchick and only 51 strikeouts. A solid season being put together by Randall Gritchick. Then he gets traded to LA to the Angels. He gets put on a team that's struggling a little. I mean, they're struggling not as bad as what Colorado was, but this Angels team has always been and will continue to be until they get new management out there, a dumpster fire. 
So Randall Gritchick comes into LA, struggled a little bit there, 165. So on the season here, still hitting solid at like a 264, 260 clip right there for Randall Gritchick. I do believe he would be an upgrade out there for the Brewers. With Randall Gritchick coming to town, you have ready to go major league talent on a pro-rated salary because the Angels will have the rest of his con or rest of his salary for the season. The Brewers will pick up that pro-rated amount. So you're not going to be getting a, you're not going to be spending the farm or spending all your money on Randall Gritchick. You're going to be getting a proven guy for less. And I think that could be a great add for this Brewers team. Also a guy like Lucas Giolito. And I know he's had struggles this year. He hasn't been the dominant pitcher that we knew with the White Sox there for a while or the top of the league pitcher that we knew there for a while. But I do think that Lucas Giolito, if you put him in the right scenario with the Brewers, I think that Lucas Giolito could be a five number five in this rotation. You put him behind the likes of, say, Burns, Woodruff, Peralta, Miley, and then you put Lucas, Lucas Giolito in there, especially at a pro-rated. I mean, if you can get some of these guys coming into Milwaukee and you don't owe them any, you don't owe them much. You just have them there. It's an experience, experience basically, or an experiment. Sorry about that. Experiment for this Brewers team. Just bringing some of these guys in. If they fail you, you didn't spend much to get them. You can still dump them. You can still designate them for assignment, and you can bring these other guys back up or bring up replacements there towards the end. Like Joey Weimer, you send him down, you bring Randall Gritchick in. If he struggles, okay, now you know it. If you bring in Lucas Giolito, you move Adrian Hauser out to the bullpen. You have flexibility now in your bullpen. The rosters are going to expand here for this Brewers team. You don't have to worry about, hey, is Garrett Mitchell going to come back because we really need a guy to replace Joey Weimer because he's struggling. I think this could be the chance. I think it really could be the chance. I don't know if Hunter Renfro, he was also released by the Angels. Harrison Bader also. I mean, both guys, good defenders. Uh, Hunter Renfro with an A-plus arm. Bader has been a dominant defender there out in center field. We saw him with the Cardinals for years, now with the Yankees. Bader could be another great defensive ad. I don't know what kind of bat they're going to bring to Milwaukee. Maybe Hunter Renfro redefines his bat when he comes back to Milwaukee because we saw what he did there for the Brewers just last year. Maybe having him come back to the Brewers would be a redefining thing for him. Or a guy like Randall Gritchick now hitting in another hitter's park on a first-place team, that could boost Randall Gritchick back up to what we saw early on in the season here from with that 308 average with the Rockies. So just some thoughts there on some recent re uh, releases from these teams. I think the Brewers should definitely be looking at these guys. If not signing them, at least looking at them and saying, okay, what could we do with him and where could we implement him into this lineup? Because I do really think that a guy like Randall Gritchick would be a definite upgrade in the outfield there for the Brewers, especially over guys. I know T Tyrone Taylor went on a hot streak there, but I do think Randall Gritchick is an upgrade over having guys like Joey Weimer or Tyrone Taylor out there for this Brewers team. And that's where I was going with that. I think it's been enough. I think we've, we've all had enough of seeing Joey Weimer's bat in this lineup, and I think we've had enough of seeing Tyrone Taylor. He went through a streak there against the Rangers where Tyrone Taylor was hitting a lot better, and then even in that twin series, he was hitting pretty good. But... I think enough is enough right now with those two. I really do think that there are viable candidates. Abraham Toro, Owen Miller down in AAA. We're carrying a lot of outfielders right now. You can afford to send one of those guys down. You'll get tonight's line or last night's lineup for the Brewers. Joey Weimer in that sixth spot. Joey Weimer did nothing for us in that sixth spot last night. He doesn't do a lot in the ninth spot for us either. He comes up with a couple hits. A couple hits a week that save his job. Other than that, he would be on the He's lucky to have an average at this point if he didn't come up with a couple hits. So that's where I'm looking right now with this Brewers team. Do the Brewers go out and pick up some of these guys who were uh, released or waived to yesterday by some of these other teams? And I really do think they better be looking at least in Randall Gritchick's um, direction and maybe a guy like Lucas Giolito, maybe. Or, or you're looking at Mike Clevenger, too. Guys who can solidify the back end of that rotation, or be long relievers for this team down the stretch here. But with that, um, I, I, it's just one of those thoughts here going down the stretch here. 
I know the Brewers have been playing better baseball as of late. You don't want to ruin what's been working good for this Brewers team, but also at the same time, you don't want to sit stagnant, especially with having guys like this out on the waiver wire right now. You want to at least be in there, especially if you're going to plan on being a contender here come the end of September leading up into August. It looks like Carlos Santana, from the reports we're seeing, Carlos Santana is looking better, and he is looking to be in the lineup or potentially at least an option today here for the Brewers. So hopefully have Carlos Santana back in the lineup. He will be a big boost back to this Brewers team and hopefully get them back into the win column here after taking a tough one to nothing loss there last night to the Cubs. But with that, we're going to quick fly around the league real quick and see what is going on in the MLB um, for some finals here. Rockies and Braves finished. Braves took them three to one. The Pirates beat the Royals six to three. Cardinals beat the Padres six to five in extra innings. And the Phillies took care of the Angels twelve to seven. So some big games there. Um, the Phillies taking care of the Angels there. The Angels kind of dumped everybody here at the waiver wire. So looking down. The stre- well, it looks like, I don't know if they were going to wait to announce to these guys that um, they were released, but Randall Gritchick was in the lineup for the Angels today. He was three for four tonight for the Angels. So looking at Randall Gritchick, looks like a viable guy to be picked up. He's hitting now for this Rockies team, got that, or for this Angels team, has that average up to 267. So I am looking at the Brewers and I'm saying, Go hunt down Randall Gritchick and get him into a Brewers uniform here moving forward towards the playoffs. But with that, I'm going to jump over into the Packers real quick and check out they had roster cuts yesterday. Roster cuts were yesterday. So just to see who was cut from this Packers team. Uh, let's see. Uh, quarterbacks on the 53-man roster, Love and Clifford. Magoo was cut from this Packers team. And then we're going to look down at running backs. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, and Emmanuel Wilson. Patrick Taylor was cut. Wide receivers, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Malik Keith, Samore Torre, and Devontae Wicks were all uh, added to the 53-man roster here. And then in the tight end room, Luke Musgrave, Josiah DeGuara and Tyler Kraft. Henry Pearson was cut. And then looking at the offensive line here for the Packers, 11 offensive linemen, David Bakhtiari, uh, Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, John Runyon Jr., Zach Tom, Rashid Walker, Yosh Nijiman, uh, Royce Newman, Sean Ryan, Caleb Jones, and Luke Tenuta. Defensive line, Kenny Clark, TJ Slayton, Devontae Wyatt, Colby Wooden, Carl Brooks, and Jonathan Ford. Outside linebackers, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, Kingsley, and Nogbear, uh, Lucas Van Ness, Justin Hollins, and Brenton Cox Jr. And then looking at inside linebacker, Devondre Campbell, Quay Walker, Isaiah McDuffie, Eric Wilson, and Tariq Carpenter. Cornerbacks, Jair Alexander, Rasul Douglas, Keyshawn Nixon, and Carrington Valentine. And then in the safety position, Darnell Savage, Rudy Ford, Jonathan Owens, Anthony Johnson Jr., and Dalian uh, Dalen, uh, Levette. And then kicker Anders Carlson and punter Daniel Wheeler. So good to see. I thought it was good to see Emmanuel Wilson, the team's leading rusher from the preseason, get added into this 53-man roster. Um. Taylor was, I think Patrick Taylor was a better pass blocker and on special teams, but I really do think that Emmanuel Wilson was a more dynamic runner, and I think he's going to add another piece into that backfield with Aaron Jones already and then adding, um, well, with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon in that backfield. And then also looking at some of the offensive skill positions that were released by the Packers. Two rookie draft picks, running back Lou Nichols was waived with an injury designation, and then wide receiver Grant DuVos was 
um, not included on the 53-man roster for this Packers team. So some interesting news there out of the Packers. Looking at some of the years for the Packers, they've always, it looks like, it looks like they stayed consistent throughout the years here. Quarterback last year, two quarterbacks on the roster. This year, two quarterbacks. Running back, they had two last year. They've added three this year. Fullbacks, they include them in with the tight ends, so they had zeros across the board until back in 2019 when they had one. Wide receiver room, six compared to seven last year. Tight ends, they have three this year compared to four. They kept an offensive lineman, an extra offensive lineman this year. They have 11 instead of that 10 from last year. And then on the defensive line, six to six. Outside linebacker, six to five. Inside linebacker, five to four. Uh, between the years, cornerback, they have four this year compared to five last year. In the safety position, five, and they had five last year. And then special teams, two this year compared to three having on the roster last year. So good to see. And I thought it was also another guy good to see made the roster was Malik Keith. I thought he's been playing great. He's been playing great for the Packers here in the preseason, so it's good to see him get added to this roster on the 53-man roster for the Packers. But with that, that is about all I have for Packer news today. Um, and that is about it for all I have for Brewer Talk, Packer Talk, Wisconsin Sports Talk. We're going to get into it a little bit later this week with the Badgers and the Packers a little bit more leading up into their Week 1 games. But with that, get out, watch the Brewers today, get down to the ballpark, listen to the game. Hopefully um, the Brewers will pick up a win here and they will get off the schneid here after losing that first, uh, second game of the series here. And they will get back to their winning ways here in game three of the series before the Phillies series comes up here this weekend. But with that, this has been Wisconsin Sports on the go with Trage. Thank you guys for listening. Deuces, Brew Crew.